This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Do you remember this piece? This was done several months back and it had a laminate top. There were parts that were plastic. There were parts that were solid wood. This was a very strange piece. Because of the laminate top and the plastic drawers and the plastic faux wicker, I opted to paint part of this piece and restore part of it. This is what it ended up looking like. I changed out the hardware, gave it a whole new look. And I love this piece, but what you don't know is that this initially had a hutch top, and that's what I'm going to be working on today. My name is Angie, and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint, and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. So you have to use your imagination a little bit right now because it's upside down on my work table. The construction is similar to the main part of the hutch in that a lot of this is made of solid elm. The wicker parts are again plastic and what's unfortunate about this is that the sliding glass doors aren't removable without disassembling the piece. I have my quality manager here to have a good look at this beforehand. He's not quite sure what I'm going to do with this yet. One thing's for sure, I have to be really careful of these glass doors while I'm refinishing this. I went back and forth in my head several times about what I wanted to do with this. Part of me wanted to keep it light, part of me wanted to do it dark, part of me wanted to paint part of it. And just to kind of show you here, these glass doors normally if they're removable, you can lift them up slightly and pull them out of their track. I looked this over very carefully. Without taking off the side panels or the top or bottom, these doors are not coming off. This back panel is held on by mostly staples. There were a few screws and a few small nails for good measure apparently. But I want to reuse this panel so I have to be really careful taking it off. This is basically a few layers of wood that is not much thicker than a typical veneer, but put together it's around a quarter of an inch thick. Things were going really well with the removal until the very last staple and I lost my grip. So yeah, I messed up one of the corners real good. Now that the bag is off, I can have a better look at how this piece is put together. You can see that it's put together pretty much with rabbits and dados. This would make it very hard to take apart to try to get those glass doors off, so I am going to go ahead with the refinishing with the doors in and hope I don't break those too. <laughs> I have to remove this trim piece so that I can get at the sides, which I am going to be cutting flush to the bottom, which, because this piece is upside down, <laughs> you see as the top. This big T-square is actually for drywall, but I find it really useful in pieces like this. I have the top of the T against the back side, which is flat. And I just used a level there to show me exactly where to draw this line. As I'm getting ready to cut, I flip this up on its side and you can get a good look now at what is actually the top of this. There is a lot of staining. I am going to save these pieces that I cut off for later on. Solid Elm is not as expensive as some woods like Walnut, but it's not cheap either, so definitely saving those. You might remember this old friend of mine. I decided to pull out Mr. Dewalt for this. Now if you saw the video where I refinished the bottom to this two-piece hutch, you'll remember me talking about how difficult the finish was to get off and I'm just showing you that here. It would have taken ages and ages and dozens of sanding pads to sand through this old finish. So a few minutes in I decided to switch to a chemical stripper which will make it a lot easier to get most of the finish off and then I can go in and sand the rest. I 
I mainly use Circa 1850 stripper and it's a really good stripper and there were some parts of this I actually had to do two treatments. So that just really goes to show how thick this old finish was. Once I had most of the outermost layer of finish removed, I went in with an 80 grit sand pad and started removing most of the dye stain. Once I had the shelves and inside of the cabinet finished, it was time to flip this right side up and deal with the top. Luckily, most of the staining came out with the stripper. There's still a little bit, but I don't think that's really going to matter with what I'm going to be doing. I used an 80 grit sand pad on the top as well and then stripped the sides. This would have been way faster to paint <laughs> for sure, but if you're familiar with this channel at all, you know that I don't normally like to paint. If I don't have to paint or if I don't think it's going to make a huge improvement in the quality and presentation of the piece. This isn't being refinished to go with its former bottom. This is going to be a standalone piece. Once everything was sanded with 80, I moved up to 120 to smooth things out a bit. If you're concerned about Nacho being out here with me, don't worry, he is not allowed when I'm using any sort of chemicals or sanding. Just the in-betweens. I went back and forth so many times about what to do with this wicker and the wood. I wasn't sure if I wanted to have the wood light and the wicker part light or the wood dark and the worker part dark. It was a hard decision, but ultimately what I decided to do was give this a bit of a look, like an old mid-century TV stand or radio console. And if you remember, they usually have some sort of fabric covering the speakers. So that's actually kind of the look I'm going for here. I want to play around with texture a little bit. I also want to do something with that back panel. So I've had this repositionable wallpaper for so long, <laughs> waiting for something to actually use it on. And I think this might be the right piece for it. I actually took the panel outside and cut it down to fit, obviously scrapping the part with the damaged corner and added the wallpaper. I don't know if a hardwood piece of furniture can have a cozy feel, but that's what I'm aiming for with this piece. So at the end, you'll have to tell me if I achieved that or not. I sanded a section of that solid elm trim piece that I had removed and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to create a stain using Odie's oil and their pigments. So normally to make a stain I use the super duper everlasting oil mixed with some Odie's safer solvent and then of course the creative color pigments. Up in smoke I've used before literally on solid elm it looks like this. And I've used espresso before as well, and that looks like this on Solid Elm. I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to go with the brown root, but I'm going to mix it up anyway. And then there's black. Now the black is really similar to Up in Smoke. You can see the black on the left and the Up in Smoke on the right. There's a slightly different tint to it, but I'm going to make little testers of all three colors and then see which one I like the best. This is a brand new jar of the Super Duper Everlasting Oil, so it needs to be thoroughly stirred. I'm adding a little bit of the Safer Solvent. You don't need to add it to make your own stains with the Odie's Oil, but it does help. I apologize now, I don't have exact measurements for these. Normally when I do it, I just sort of wing it <laughs> until I get the color that I want.
So this is a fairly weak solution. I didn't use a lot of pigment, so it's gonna be a bit light, but you'll be able to see the different tones. The one with the black pigment and the up and smoke are fairly similar. I've definitely ruled the brown out, but I wanted it to be darker. So I went back in and I added more pigment to the black and then I'm gonna try it again. And it's gonna look super dark here at first. It's gonna look almost opaque, but obviously once you wipe it back, you'll be able to see that wood grain. This is more the color I was going for. And actually I'll do it right next to the original black stain solution so you can see the difference. That's more what I'm looking for. So basically what I'm gonna do now is make a large version of that black stain. To do so, I just have a bigger jar and I basically add the same ingredients with approximately same ratios. And I even dumped the little tester in there as well. This will be enough oil to probably do three pieces this size, but when you're mixing custom stains, it's always better to have a little bit too much than run out halfway through and have to try to remember exactly what you did, especially if you weren't using exact measurements. And of course, you always want to double check your big recipe before you start. Looks good, so away we go. This is always terrifying, and there's a part of me looking at this is like, oh, I love that light wood, but this is gonna look really unique and really cool, and <laughs> I'm okay with it now. Also, a lot of the grain pattern you see left over after the sanding was residual dye stain, so if I had kept sanding and gotten every little piece of that dye stain out, there wouldn't be much grain to look at. And it just settles in so nicely and brings out the natural variations in the wood. Elm is an amazing wood for staining because of how crazy and wild the grain pattern is. Now this is going to look a little bit weird here first, but I'm actually using the same stain over the paint and then wiping it back. This is going to help with that sort of soft textured fabric feel that I was mentioning earlier that you see so often in mid-century TV and radio consoles. I have to make sure I know exactly where this middle shelf is so that I can nail the backboard into it. So I'm just using this big T-square again to draw that line and then I'll just nail along it. I would have used staples, but at this point I don't have a crown stapler yet. But for now, these little nails do just fine. So the piece is upside down now, it's time to deal with the legs. Now there are a lot of options I could have done here. I could have used straight legs. I was initially going to build a custom base. I opted for these angled legs and I have to be really careful with placement. Screwing into end grain like you see here is never as strong as screwing into face grain. So whenever possible, try to minimize how much of your leg support is into end grain. The other thing to consider is that these hutch tops are very narrow. So putting these legs on a bit of an angle is going to give me a little bit of extra stability where these have a tendency sometimes to be a little bit tippy. That's definitely something you wanna think about, especially if you have cabinet doors that swing open because that added weight can sometimes actually pull the unit forward. Just make sure if you're doing a splayed leg that you don't have it splayed too far in the back because you don't want it to touch the wall. I'm just using this center hole punch to mark where my screw holes will be and then I will be pre-drilling some pilot holes here for the screws and then I'll go ahead and attach the legs. I'm a little bit unsure of using the natural color legs. Tell me below what you guys think. I was tempted to maybe paint these black. I'm just, I'm not entirely sure of the whole color scheme here. I love how the elm turned out. I'm just not sure about the legs, but they are nice and sturdy and will prevent this piece from tipping forward. All right, let's have a look at what we started with. This hutch top was a mix of wood and plastic, shown upside down here, of course, with sliding glass doors that I couldn't remove. 
There are so many different things I could have done with this in terms of stain or paint, leaving it light or leaving it dark, but I'm really happy with the direction that this went and I love that this physically hard object has a soft feel now. It's just really neat. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching as always and I will see you next time. I just want to take a quick moment to say thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your own website. And it's so easy to do. Everything is streamlined. Everything is intuitive. They have so many amazing templates for you to go through and you can tweak these templates as well. You can change colors, change pictures, add many different types of pages. And you can even create a community on your Squarespace website with things like a fully integrated commenting system that allows people to comment and reply and like your content. Starting a website has never been easier. You can go to squarespace.com for a free trial, check things out, and then when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com slash transcendfurniture and you can save yourself 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website.